Okay, here we have solving an exponential equation by using substitution and quadratic factoring. So in order for us to solve this, we do, it is best to write this term as two to the power x squared, because remember you multiply the exponent, so it is equivalent to the exponent two x. Um, and then what you wanna do is you wanna use substitution. So instead of x, we'll say like let y equal what's inside that parentheses there, which is two to the x. And then that means this becomes y squared, this becomes minus 10 times y, and then you have plus 16 equal to zero. Now that just looks like a regular quadratic equation, which I can solve by factoring y minus eight and y minus two. Um, those numbers will multiply to give me positive 16, combined to give me negative 10. So y equals eight and y equals two. And then you have to make sure that you go back and you back sub, okay? So what did y represent? y represented two to the power x. So it's actually two to the power x that equals eight and two to the power x that equals two. And so then if I take the ln on both sides, We will move the x over so we get ln of two. I didn't need to put it in parentheses. I don't know why I did. And then divide by that number that's being multiplied by x so that you can get x alone. And then the same thing here, divide by ln of two, divide by ln of two. Here, it happens to be the same, so I get x equal to one. Over here, ln of eight divided by ln of two is actually equal to three in my calculator. See, ln of eight over ln of two is equal to three. So I get two solutions, one and three that work here. Now similarly, this one can be written as e to the x squared, and then when you multiply those exponents, you do get the two x, so that is equivalent. And then you can say let y equal this e to the x part, and when you the e to the x, you get y squared minus 4y minus 12 equal to 0. I can factor that, y minus 6, y plus 2. So I get y equal to 6 and y equal to negative 2. And then I can plug back, I got a back sub. So it's e to the x that equals 6, and it's e to the x that equals negative 2. Then when you take the ln on both sides, Um, this one you can't type in your calculator. Ln, remember your arguments can never be negative. It tells me error. So this one I can't, I can't solve any further because you have an ln with a negative argument and you can never have a negative argument. So if we continue here, we'll bring the x down, we get ln of e, we get ln of six, um, and then we divide by ln of e. So we get x equals ln of six divided by ln of e is 1.79. If they want the exact answer, you can just tell them um, it's ln of six because the ln of e by itself is actually equal to one. So you're basically saying ln of six divided by one is ln of six. And if you don't believe me, can always do ln of e to the one all by itself and it is the value one okay so if it wants the exact answer give them this if it if it'll accept the rounded answer give them this okay now similarly for this problem again i can write that as 10x squared and so then i can replace the with the y, so y squared minus 8y plus 15, so I get y minus 5, y minus 3 equals 0, so we get y equal to 5 and y equal to 3, and then just back sub. So remember, y represented 10 to the power x, so now you have 5, 10 to the power x equals 3. Do the ln on both sides of the equations then bring your powers down and 
and then divide by the ln of 10 on both sides. So you get x equals ln of 3 over ln of 10 over here. If they want the exact answers, you can give them those. If they do take the decimals or it tells you to round, then they want the decimals. And then you can give them whatever the decimals are. So 0 0.6. Um, that would actually make it 90, which would make it 7. So we would do 600 and, um, 698, but that'll make it actually go up to 9. So 699. And over here we get ln of 3 over ln of 10, which is 0 0.477. So again, if they want the exact answers, give them the fractions. If they want the decimals, there's your decimals.